Many students only go to see their faculty advisor if they have some kind of hold on their transcript, they can't register, they need them to sign a form, but your faculty advisor can do so much more for you. Today in Course Hacks, we're gonna talk about the faculty advisor meeting, why you absolutely should schedule a time to meet with your faculty advisor, not just once, not just twice, but many times throughout your college career. This is Course Hacks for Higher Ed. Today we have uh, Dr. Brian Dewsbury, Associate Professor of Biological Sciences at the University of Rhode Island. And unfortunately, we don't have with us today Assistant Dean Michelle Fonts. We miss you, Michelle, and we will see you next week. Today we're going to talk about faculty advisor meetings. What are they for? What could they be for? How can they be helpful? Um, and so I'm hoping we can have a great conversation about this today because a lot of students are registering for classes for the spring. And so they might be considering making an appointment with their advisor, or um, they are filling out forms that they need a signature for. And a lot of these meetings tend to be, you know, either signing a form or checking a box or lifting a hold, but they could be so much more than that. So that's what I'm hoping to talk about today. What, what could these meetings be? Um, what are they right now? How can you use them to help you in higher ed? So I think I should start with you, Brian, because I know that you have a little bit more of uh, like an active, inclusive type of approach to advising meetings than maybe most. So I'm really curious how you manage these meetings and what you see their, their use for, really. Well, you know, what I've seen, I think, is, is mostly a good thing. I've seen an evolution in how these meetings have been messaged. Um, so in our college, college being like actual college and university, we have a, a dual of advising model. So we have professional advisors who tend to focus a lot on, on um, curriculum auditing and making sure the classes are correct and you're fulfilling the requirements of the curriculum. And then the faculty advisor is supposed to talk to you about like bigger things, like what you're trying to be in life, preparing you for the next step in your academic career and any challenges you may have, et cetera, et cetera. I think, um, I think not every student fully gets that, right? So what, what I get a lot is the email that says, can you help me pick classes for next semester, right? I'm so like my, six I, of those this week. Right, right. <laughs> and so my, my response is, let's, let's set up a meeting and let's, let's just have a general conversation, right? And you know, in the pre-pandemic times when we can do this face-to-face, -face, they would come into my office with a sheet in hand and I would say, okay, put it down, let's put that to the side, right? Tell me what you are trying, what, what are you trying to be in the next 10 to 15 years? What's, what are your career goals? What are your life goals? All right. And we spend a good 10, 15 minutes talking about that, right? And then I say, okay, so then how is the degree you're getting from URI going to set you up to be successful in that goal? All right. So that's another five minutes. And then, then we start looking at the curriculum and says, okay, well, what kind of course spread do you need? to make you competitive for that next stage, right? And so of course, if I, if I know students for a while, we don't have that exact same conversation, but that's like the first conversation because I want to get them to backward design from their aspirations yeah. to what we're doing in the second and not just try to think of what are the next 12 credits I need to plug in to make sure I'm on this track, right? Get away from that, you know, just lockstep thinking, just march, march, march without any self-reflection so that's, I guess, my encouragement is to, to ask my students to think about that long term before we get to the next semester. What about you now? Well, I, I, I like that you said that backward design. That's where my mind went as well. And I have mm -hmm. to confess something here that when I was in college, I didn't meet with a faculty advisor <laughs> until it was time to graduate and then, you know, there were some issues, right? Like, I, <laughs> It came out that I hadn't uh, fulfilled certain requirements that I didn't uh, realize. So I think uh, uh, there wasn't necessarily strong messaging either that this was something that that I should be doing. Mm -hmm. um, we figured it out. I, I did graduate, you know. Right, right. Well, clearly, right. <laughs> <laughs> Unless we had to make some phone calls, right? <laughs> yeah, but, I, but for me, having that context of that experience, mm -hmm. not really knowing what these meetings were for, mm -hmm. um, to me, Ultimately, it was about making sure all the boxes were checked. Right. And I think it can be so much more than that. Um, and I really enjoy when students 
come back meeting after meeting right, because by right. the time we get to the second or third meeting, we're mm -hmm. talking about more things right. and we're going deeper into how I can help right. them and service right. their go career goals, their, you know, even their day to day. Mm -hmm. um, because your faculty advisor really can be a major mm -hmm. ally and mentor for you during college. And it's part of our jobs. <laughs> it really right. is. So I don't think enough students take advantage of having your own personal academic coach and career coach. Oh yeah. Oh, absolutely. I mean, your major. Yeah. I mean, I would add to that and this is, you know, I'm trying to speak directly to the students here. Do realize that, you know, curriculum sheets are not written uh with a self-reflection component right I, I don't i don't think it i'm not trying to blame people who write curriculum sheets but it, it tends to list listicule right all the classes in the order and here's a suggested format you should take it and but then you get a sense if you deviate from that format you know you know something's wrong with you kind of thing so i think this is where the personal coach really comes in right you know i had a young lady who was a biology major and in a sequence of those conversations it turns out she took a class called Thanology, which I'll confess to you, I never heard of before. Study of death, right? Yeah, I, like, I didn't, <laughs> I, I feel embarrassed to say that, but she fell in love, right? And just this week she emailed me, she graduated from mortuary school, right? So she took that one class, but felt initial, yeah, yeah, stop it now, okay. So it's October, it's already near Halloween. <laughs> Things she, are took that, <laughs> she took that one class, but was feeling such an imposter syndrome to deviate from this curriculum sheet because it reads like a, a um, like a riot act, right? This is what you need to be doing for the next four years. Do you dare not to this line? Then you're not really a student. So yeah, the, the the faculty advising. Hopefully, you have the kind of people like yourself now who is doing that backward design because they encourage you to keep thinking, keep interrogating that that notion of self and where you see yourself impactful and growing and things like that. And that might change. And if that changes, that's all right. We're here to help, you know, guide that change in a productive way. It's really helpful to do that early on because what I often see is that students finish all of the check boxes, the required mm -hmm. courses, mm -hmm. then they have free electives and mm -hmm. they're like, oh, then they start to think, what do I wanna study? Right. And I mean, there's nothing wrong with that. If you reflect mm -hmm. at any time, it's important, but right think of how much more powerful your education can be if you already have reflected right. on what direction you want it to go in. Right. So that to me, yeah, that's a really powerful model. Yeah. Um, and I have to say too, I, I enjoy these meetings. I hope that other faculty do too, because it, it is a very different kind of way of engaging with students and making right. an impact than teaching a class. Yeah, I mean, you know, Freud talks about dialogue. You know, it's a word you hear me use a lot. <clears throat> I believe it's the foundation of a, a quality, authentic education experience. It doesn't just have to be in the classroom. You know, it's, it's any interaction you have with a student is an opportunity for education and meaningful engagement to happen, right? And so this is just one of those. Another point I will I'll make to the, the kind of lockstep mentality. Um, I, I remember a few years ago, I had a, a, a PhD student, um, she wasn't in my lab, but she was about to graduate. And she was in my office in tears. And and I Which you is know, normal, was, by the way. Her <laughs> PhD students. But, <laughs> but she was that. she had a kind of a very specific, you know, challenge and she, you know, she wasn't sure what her next step should be. And it, it felt as though for the first time in her life she had come face to face with a sense of discontent with what she was doing. And so I, and so I asked, well, you know, you did three degrees before, well, you're about to, do, you know, you're on your third degree, you know, at what point, like what, what led you to feel this sense of discontent and did you feel this in the past? And she said, look, you know, when I was in high school, I was good at math and science. They told me you should major in that in college. When I was in college, I majored, I was good in it. Somebody said, join my lab. It was interesting. I was good at it. They said, oh, you're good at it. You should go to grad school. I went to grad school. I was good at it. I got a master's. I was good at it. I got a PhD. So it was always just a, oh, you're good at this. So just go do it. But but no sense of why, right? Like what, what about this is really moving your soul, moving you internally? She ended up going into the K-12 system 
And she absolutely loves it. Like that's where like her soul just got awakened, right? But because the advice she was getting up until that point was just, you know, you're getting A's and B's in this, or you're publishing papers, or you collect data really well, or you're good at R, you know, <laughs> therefore just stay in this space. Um, that's not advice, right? That's, that's, you're kind of helping a system out. And so I guess my message to the students is when you seek advice, do, do, do make sure, I think now you use the word relationship, right? Make sure it's a relationship that's being cultivated and it's not just you're given a set of instructions to follow. Um, Cause th those are two very different kinds of advisor relationships. Well, um, let me probe this a little bit more because please. let's be fair that not every faculty member has really reflected on what these meetings are for, right? Or right, what they right. could be. Mm -hmm. So what would you suggest that a student go in as like their first question to ask the advisor to kind of elicit this deeper communication rather than, you know, have you filled out your curriculum sheet? <laughs> well, I would, I, I would suggest that the student go to the advisor with uh, a bit of a mini narrative, maybe less of a, you know, that ends in a probing question itself, right? And so the mini narrative might be something along the lines of, um, I'm a pre-medical student, or I am, I am hopefully looking for a job in wildlife conservation or the theater industry, some, you know, something along those lines, right? Um, my experience to this point has been mostly decent with some challenges. Um, I would just like to have a conversation with you about the best ways I can set myself up for success at the next level. So I, I don't know if I ended in a question mark there, <laughs> <laughs> but, but, but I think you get the gist of what I'm saying, right? So you sort of laying this scenario out. Um, and I think that particular approach makes it clear what you're looking for is a conversation and not just sort of a one answer to a specific question. Yeah. Um, so a lot of these conversations, Nell, I'm sure yours are the same. Like they end up with me saying like, have you looked into study abroad? Do you realize it actually is affordable? <laughs> um, do you know how your eyes can be open if you spend a, 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 a semester studying in London or Cuba or England? You know, um, I mean, I haven't uh, said that this semester. I, I realize I said London and England <laughs> in the same sentence, so you're gonna have to cut that. We're gonna ask the producers. <laughs> uh, yeah, don't worry. We've got we'll handle that in post. <laughs> oh, will we? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, pandemic. No one's traveling, right? But. Yeah. Um, Anyway, I hope I answered your question about, about a good kind of opening salvo. Yeah, I think it's it's helpful when, especially when you're kind of hoping to get th those expectations might not be matched, you know? Mm -hmm. So you might go mm -hmm. to some professors and, and they're all ready to have these deeper conversations with you. And then you might go mm -hmm. to others, maybe they're, they're new. I know when right. I first came to URI, I started advising, there was no guidance on what to do. Mm -hmm. It was just, here's your advisees, go. <laughs> so, you know, I yeah. think that kind of exposes an issue right there, but, right, right. um, <laughs> but just, I, my thing is I'd like for students to realize that you can go as often as you need, right? You can ask almost anything you want to ask. Um, and it is about cultivating a relationship and having a dialogue. And there's a lot of like, to me, it's a really powerful way to get the kind of mentorship that you might miss out on if you don't, if you're not in someone's lab, mm -hmm, you know, mm -hmm. if you're not already doing research in a lab, this, a lot of times right. your, your lab, you know, manager, or the grad student you're working with or postdoc or faculty member, if you're doing research, you ask them these questions anyway, but if you're not in a lab, if you're not doing research, then who do you ask? And that's really your faculty advisor. Right. Right. Awesome. Yeah. Any so, uh, any last points you want to add here? Um, yeah, I mean, I, I think I have to add this last point just in lieu of the fact that we are at a very large, a fairly large university, you know, 16,000 students, undergrad and grad, I believe. Um, so it becomes a bit of a bureaucracy in the sense that there are a lot of people, a lot of offices. Um, you know, the good side to that is a lot of places you can go for advice and help. Um, but it also can be overwhelming, right? So I understand that for uh, some students, I know this was the case for me, and I went to a small school and it was like that for me, 
you're going and you you don't quite know how to make sense of the five different doors you're sh technically supposed to knock on. So then instead of doing that, you just kind of shrink back and like, I'll just figure it out. I don't want to bother anybody. Um, so I, I guess I'm imploring for um, some huspa, you know, to be just be willing to, to, to do that, identify somebody and just step to them. It's our job to do that. Um, but also maybe find that, I think you mentioned this earlier, Nell, that in that, in that, you know, that spread of people, you'll probably find just that one or two, right? Who you, for whatever reason, that's the connection you formed. Doesn't have to be Dr. Correct, doesn't have to be Dr. Dewsbury, it could be yeah, your professional advisor, it could be an athletic advisor, but you'll generally find that one or two individuals with whom they just get you, right? And, and, and so we say in professional advising, faculty advisor for this podcast, but I, I think we want to sort of extend that to the people who really just have your back. <laughs> and, and when you find that you hold on to that, because that is what's really going to make a college experience um, a special thing. So, mm, I love that. Thank you. I think that's an excellent point. And a good one to end on. So thanks. And we'll see you next week. Well, see I think we're week. talking about procrastination, but we might put it off again. We'll see. We might put it off next week, just to, <laughs> just to make the point. <laughs> see you next week. <laughs>